Recently, I caught a dream ant colony of mine. These ants are Polyergus montevegus, a slave-making species. The colony is dulotic, meaning that it is made up of two different species of ants. The slave makers are Polyergus montevegus, and their slaves are Formica palatifolva. The Polyergus workers' only jobs are to defend the colony and to raid other Formica palatifolva colonies for their brood. The slaves, on the other hand, do all of the hard work. They hunt for food, tend to the queen and brood, and make sure that the colony works as it's supposed to. There's just one problem. The colony is infested with blood-sucking parasitic mites. Of course, this is a very serious problem. If left unchecked, these parasitic mites could wipe out the entire colony. These mites act by attaching themselves to the legs of the workers and slowly sucking their blood all the way until the worker dies. They then spread to other healthy workers and the cycle repeats. In the wild, these mites are often not a death sentence for the entire colony. Wild ecosystems are complex, and there are natural control mechanisms for these parasitic mites. One example is predatory mites. These mites hunt other small arthropods, such as springtails and other mites, including our parasitic mites. These predatory mites live in the soil and help the ants by controlling mite populations that may negatively impact the colony. However, in captivity, these control mechanisms no longer exist, and as I said before, an unchecked parasitic mite infestation can easily cause an entire colony to die. Especially in a situation like this, where the host workers are somewhat difficult to replace, it's crucial that I act quickly to save as many workers as possible. I start this procedure by dumping out the test tubes that I use to collect the ants in into their new setup, which is an ant den from arthropodantics.com. With the ants nicely spread out like this, I can easily identify infected individuals and deal with them. Here's our first patient, checking in with the ant doctor. I have to be very careful when holding the ants, as Formica workers are quite squishy. Too much pressure will cause severe damage or even death, which obviously is not ideal. We're trying to save ants here, not kill them. Removing the mites is actually relatively easy. When running a pair of featherweight forceps down the leg of the ant, the mite will be plucked off. Then I can just take the mite and crush it against the table to make sure that it's gone for good. Once the ant is mite-free, she's placed back into the setup to rejoin with her colony and tell everyone about her scary doctor visit. Here's our next patient. Same concept here. Hold her in place and remove the mite with forceps. Some ants will have more than one mite. Here's an unlucky worker with two mites. Thankfully, they're no match for the ant doctor. Once all of the ants that were in one tube are clean, it's time to dump in another tube. Next up is the tube with the queen in it. You may be able to notice a few workers in here that have parasitic mites on them. Let's just hope the queen isn't infected. By the looks of it, the queen does have a mite on her, but it's not the same as the workers. It's white and it's running around on her gaster. If it were a bloodsucker, it wouldn't be running around like this. It's probably harmless, so we're going to go ahead and leave it to not stress the queen out any more than we have to. And now, it's time for the ant doctor to get back to work.
You may have noticed that, so far, every single patient has been a Formica worker. To my surprise, not a single Polyurgus worker had any mites on them. I'm not sure why this is the case, but I'm sure they're happy about it. Now it's finally time for the third and final tube of ants. Once I remove the mites off of these last workers, the colony will be given time to find their new nest and settle in. One last patient to go. And that's it! After thoroughly checking every worker, it seems as though I was able to remove all of the mites. With that, the colony was allowed to settle into their nest, and I'll be looking forward to keeping them normally from here on out. And thank you for watching! This was my first ant keeping video in a while, so I hope you enjoyed it! Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff for more exciting content coming soon.